Hi everybody. Sorry I have to put this on. Um, so today I want to review We Are Here to Hurt Each Other uh, by my Facebook friend Paula Ash. And uh, Paula is an Indiana-based horror writer. And quickly, she's one of my favorite authors to follow on Facebook as well. She lives in Indiana with her wife and her absolutely adorable toddler son. He's a cutie pie. And uh, so, I mean, a whole lot of it is, a whole lot of her posts are, uh, are, are just so completely normal. You know, taking the kid out and going to the playground. and But then she turns out work like this and I think, man, I have some fucked up friends. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is a great collection, and it is the kind of stuff that every horror writer looks for. It's very well written. It is, um, it's such a look into deviousness, and it it's, tends to be quite based in realism rather than too much, you know, abstract or, but it's literary at the same time. Um, not a whole lot of paranormal stuff going on. But just enough to think that, yeah, there's something else out there. And, um, you know, we've landed on a good collection when every story makes you go, Jesus, at the end of it. So I'm going to give this one five out of five stars. There are a couple little typos, but it's so much fun to read. I can, I, I can, um, sorry, I've got my hair on my face. I can overlook the little typos. Um, and Paula also, uh, she's very educated, so there's a real sense of language and purpose and circularity and all those really cool things that go into a narrative that most of us don't really think about, but it's all in there in layers, and, and that's one of the things that makes it just really tasty to read, right? So, um, so I'm just going to go over what some of the stories are. Um, and so you start off with a content warning. The following book contains extreme graphic violence, child endangerment, child assault, murder, sexual assault, incest, necrophilia. Okay, so you start thinking, as you go down the list, you think, okay, this is good, this is cool. Then you start thinking, uh-oh, but wait till you get to it. <laughs> um, the cover by Don Noble, I'll show it to you. Um, it's also creepy as hell, just a fantastic cover. Look at that. It's kind of a riff. It's it's like a creepy old painting. It's kind of like a creepy old, one of those creepy old painting versions. We have all seen that weird ad that's a face entirely made of teeth. I know I've gotten it in my feed before. I don't know who made that thing or why, but it is so creepy. But Paula went one step ahead and made an actual character out of it. So... Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty, uh, pretty creepy. Now, what, um, now the first two stories, the first one's called Aspects of Emptiness, and it's a flash fiction piece, and then Carry On, Carry On, which, by the way, was responsible for me getting Carry On My Wayward Son in my head by Kansas for, like, two weeks after I read this, so. <laughs> Curses. Um, so, the first two stories discuss a character called the, the Man with the Face of Teeth, which seems to be this entity that makes people rip their own faces off. It is just stomach churning, but in a good way, in a good way. <laughs> um, one thing that I was kind of expecting as the collection went on was I was expecting maybe possibly a looser... Like, each of the stories was going to have a loose relationship to this terrible character, the man with the face of teeth. Um, but that's not what ended up happening, which I don't have any problems with. I just, I kind of was set up to expect something, but because the stories were, the first two stories were linked. And I also was kind of thinking, is, is this going to be one of those, I can't remember what they're called, but there's like a poem that it starts short and then it adds more and then it adds more and then it adds more. It's like a numeric poem, but no, it's not, it wasn't going to be quite like that, but... <laughs> But the book does subvert every expectation, which is also fun. Um, so the second story is, a, both of these two deal with people who have encountered the man with the face of teeth. 
Uh, the next story is called All the Hellish Cruelties of Heaven, and it's a story about a basically kind of a weird convent, and she's been following around a serial killer, and she tracks down who he is. And the story, but the story ends pretty abruptly, and even though it's kind of said what it needs to say, it said its piece, it reads like the chapter of more. So it would be interesting to read a novel about this cult and this killer and all of these people. Um, the writing in this is just so much fun to read. Uh, I'm trying to find a good passage here that's nice and um, nice and descriptive that I can read to you. Oh well. Uh, the next one is Grave Miracles. It's another flash piece. And then Exile and Extremist, which is a series of back and forth emails. It's it's like an epistolary type story. And that's another thing that I like about these stories is that they all have different forms. Some of them are straight up prose, some of them are a little bit more abstract, different lengths, and then you've got these epistolary kind of approaches. And it's interesting to see the form back and forth as modern technology, right? Because you can write a story in letters, but people don't really send letters anymore, so it's emails and texts and uh, this is a story about a, a resurrection cult that these two journalists sort of stumble on and the one's discovered it and she's trying to tell the other guy not to go and check it out and she ends up kind of losing her mind and uh, the next one is Jacqueline Last Last in the Gaslight and it's a bit of a take on the Jack the Ripper myth um, it's a lot of fun Because it's, I mean, everybody has a theory about who Jack the Ripper was and what happened, and nobody really knows. But a lot of everybody is familiar, or every, everybody that is interested in the history of crime, you know, they we're all familiar with the crime. So immediately you you catch on. Oh, hey, this is this is a Jack the Ripper thing, right? So that one was fun to read. And then this one, uh, because you watched, is a straight up revenge tale. Um, does not go very well for the protagonists. Uh, the next one, a needle shine litany. <laughs> this is more revenge. And at first you're a little bit worried about it, but then by the end of it, you're kind of going, you're kind of rooting for what happens to this asshole. So yay. Uh, and then the mother of all monsters. This is told in the form of a letter of a woman to her sister and it really captures one of the things that I like best about this collection of stories is that as you read, you kind of start out, okay, things are okay. Okay, these characters are kind of terrible. Okay, these characters are, oh my God. <laughs> so so you, uh, Paul is really good at building the suspense of this just creeping horror. And uh, this is another one. Um, and it takes on a different voice than the previous stories as well. Um, another flash piece called The Witness, and then we've got Bereft. Okay, this one was seriously fucked up. Paula, this is fucked up. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't help myself, but it's very hard to describe the fucked up -edness without giving anything away, but this is fucked up. Okay, this is just a fucked up story. Like, ooh. Um, it reminds me of... Okay, so it's a story about a woman who goes to collect the things and the body of her dead sister. And I'm a little bit actually reminded of, there were those twins, I think they were like in the 60s or 70s, and they had, they were the, the stereotype of the weird twins with the weird psychic connection. And one day one of them decided they were gonna stop talking, and then one day they just decided they were gonna decide between the two of them that it was time to stop living. And one of them, and she just died. like. <laughs> And that's what I was reminded of, that weird things happen when children are left alone or something. I don't know. Anyway, um, this was another one of those stories that made me go, Jesus, at the end of it. So great job on it. It's the kind of thing that every horror writer likes to be squicked out and likes to read. But yes, definitely a trigger warning on this one. Um, 
So the next story was Sorry, I think Tell us signatures from a future corpse. Now that was the last story and also the longest story. Um, I don't think it was quite novella length, but it was quite, it was much longer than the rest of them. And it's, it starts off as almost, a, it's, it's a story about a murder investigation. And I mean, it could go very well as an episode of Law and Order. But as the story progresses, it becomes a lot almost um, Lovecraftian or paranormal in how it happens in this sort of eldritch location and these terrible things happening and um so it's got a really really fun twist at the end of it and uh it overall this is a really really satisfying um satisfying collection and paula's last words here are <laughs> Whenever I write fiction, I have to stop and ask myself, am I writing this just to hurt people? For a while, I couldn't handle the fact that oftentimes the answer was yes. I believe that people's pain is valid. I believe that old cliche that hurt people hurt people. In fact, I don't need to believe it. I'm evidence of it. Well, this is the kind of pain that is almost enjoyable um, because it's well done. And the reason I read as a horror reader, as a horror fan, is work like this. The writing, where the writing is really good, it makes me confront the demons in the world. And they're real demons, not just the kind of things that you only see in movies, but the really, truly tragic, horrible things that humans visit on each other. And it makes me confront that part of myself as to why I enjoy this but I enjoy it because for the most part eventually evil does get its get what's coming to it and even in a collection like this that sort of revels in the really bad stuff at the end you do almost feel like a happy ending is coming it may not be coming now but it is coming and evil doesn't win but maybe I'm a little too optimistic maybe Paula doesn't see it that way but I really enjoyed that. So anyway, five out of five stars. We are here to hurt each other by Paula Ash. And hopefully I can get an interview with her for the horror tree. So look for that in the coming weeks. And I hope you're reading lots of great horror. Have a great day.